always something that needs a little fixing on Bar Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric here at Far Point Farms in the mountains of North Carolina. Tonight, before I start on this, I want to remind you all that I have a second channel that is dedicated entirely to everything automotive. So if you're into automotive content like tool reviews, scan tool reviews, how-to videos, repair videos, car enthusiast stuff, you'll probably want to follow me over there. That channel is Far Point Farms Restorations and Repairs. I hope you'll head over there and maybe subscribe. Also, we have a brand new website, Farpoint Farms with an S at the end.com. I hope you'll join us there. We have forms and we're building a kind of a cool community. So I hope you'll be a part of that as well. But on to tonight's video, I've got this Ansel. I've had quite a few Ansel tools over the years and I have quite a few Ansel tools right now. They reached out to me and they wanted me to check out their, what they're calling, and I feel like after doing the research online about it, is a pro level tool at a mid level price. And it is a new scan tool from them. It's been out about a year now, but they've been doing software updates and working out the kinks. And I think they've got it figured out from the looks of it. This is a tablet-based professional bi-directional scan tool. We're going to unbox it tonight. We're going to look it over some of the features and functions tonight. And then in part two, which will come in a couple of weeks, I'll hook it up to a few cars here on the farm. We'll hook it up to a couple cars and we'll take a look and see bi-directional controls special functions like oil resets, um, you know, electronic parking brake resets, stuff like that. And then we'll also look at live data, code reading in general, and just see just how well this thing performs in a real world environment. But for tonight, I'm going to get the camera close in. We're going to unbox it. We'll turn it on. I'll go through some of the menus with you, take a look at some of the features that it has, and just give you a general overview. Let's do it. And here we are up close and personal. You know, man, it's funny. As a mechanic, Scan tools just give me give me good vibes, man. I love seeing and playing with new scan tools, especially higher end ones like this. This is just, I'm excited. I've been kind of doing my research, waiting for this thing to come, and I'm ready to play with it. And here we go. We do have a nice blow molded case. I'll go ahead and pull that out. We'll go through some of this other stuff. So here's our probably subscription details. And we got ourselves a nice user manual. Wow, okay. Very detailed color user manual, 40 pages in all in English. That's something I'll definitely want to go over. And we do have some cabling here. So we've got, let me go ahead and get this out and show you. Regular OBD2 connection, and it does use the standard connector there. So if this were somehow to get damaged, close the door on it, something like that, that is easily replaceable. And we do have, looks like, USB-C charging cable. And this would be to update this, which is our, well, I always call them the dice because that's working for Volvo all the years, but this is our communication box. This is our box that is going to allow us to communicate Bluetooth wirelessly between the scan tool and the, uh, the main unit here does look like it has power, so it might have a battery on board, but you, uh, Bluetooth, not Bluetooth, USB connection there. And it's a nice looking piece of machinery there. Cool. And then lastly, charging cable. So that hooks to that and then allows us to recharge the main unit. Let's move all that aside because I know if you're like me, you want to play with the main toy. And the main toy, I call it a toy. Again, like mechanics, this is a toy to a mechanic. This is how we play. <laughs> and here we are, the uh, nice blow molded case. Not blow molded, nice like rubberized, you know, shock proof. You can see like it takes a dent. Does have a camera, so we can do this. We could uh, probably add apps to this to use it for um, inspection reports, vehicle inspection reports. Over here on the side looks like a USB and the USB plug for charging. On the front here, we have a 10.1 inch screen. That's a huge screen for a scan tool. And these days, that is, uh, that's becoming more and more industry standard. Over here, it looks like power and volume up and down. So what we are gonna do is fire it up. And I'll get the camera closer in here and we'll get it all figured out here. I'm gonna roll this down. Okay. And I'll put something behind it here to hold it up like so i've got a light in the way there we'll figure this out we're going to get it looking nice i promise you there we go that's a nicer picture oh, oh. oh man 
it's just going to be a pain. That's all right. I can hold it up while we work on this thing, can't we? Ansel, a vehicle inspection pilot expert. And here we are going to unlock it. Hopefully. There we go. And we're already in. Um, one thing you're definitely going to want to do right away is going to get our, oops, got to get our Bluetooth or our, there we go. And there's our network. I'll go ahead and type that in. Boom, connected. Good deal. So we can go back. And I would imagine there's going to be quite a few updates. But just let's take a look at the screen here and check this out. So we have diagnose, hot functions. That would be like um, brake resets, oil resets, stuff like that. Update, data manager. That's where we're going to be holding any uh, live data that we've freeze framed or anything like that. Then we have quick support, it looks like, DTC query, feedback, and data playback. We also have function list, settings, and user. I'm going to go ahead and set up the user. And they were done. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what I set up here just so you see what's going on. I've registered my product, Farpoint Farms USA, Farpoint Farms Restorations and Repair. Got my email. And there we go. So we have all our equipment entered in here. That way, if you print something off, you're, you're getting that. We'll go play with settings. You have a demo mode, which is kind of cool. So if you're not sure if the unit can do this, that, or the other thing, well, there's a way to go into it. We're going to leave it at diagnosis for right now. Units, we can do US or metric. It does offer you two search engines, which is kind of cool. We're going to stick with Google because we're here in the US. System info, it is Ansel version 10. There is a firmware update for the BCI. And you can do that as well. It does come with 20, looks like 24, 25 gigs of available uh, onboard RAM. My understanding from reading the directions is that there is a place to put an SD card or micro SD so you can add additional um, memory if needed. But as of right now, there's still 15 gig, which is lots. Version update. And we'll go ahead and check to see if there's any updates available for this. And there is, so check it out. So we had 10 and now we're up to 12.2. So I'll go ahead and do the download on that and it'll, it'll probably roll through that. While it's actually, we'll, we'll skip that for now, but we can change our language as well. And I'll back out of that. All right, let's check it out. I've got it in demo mode now. I'm just curious to see what we had in demo mode, but go to that. Data playback is going to give us a whole lot of nothing because we don't have, we haven't recorded anything yet. But you can see we have pictures and video. So if I go to this, I just took a picture. If I wanted to record what was on on screen, press the record button and immediately we would start having that happen. Let's go back here. Feedback form is like, hey, um, I noticed that when I was, I, I had a 2002 Toyota Sienna and when I went to do X, Y, or Z, the system crashed or it wasn't able to activate the window motors or whatever. This has become real commonplace in these newer scan tools where, yeah, there's so much data, there's so much going on that sometimes a component is non-functional or it just doesn't work right. Well, here we go. You punch in the vehicle, you tell them what's going on there, you write your complaint. If you've got documentation like a live feed or whatever, you go ahead, you send it off. That allows the people who are doing the updates to fix it. So the next update comes around and they're ready for it. DTC query. We have a list of all the different P codes, and there are a lot of P codes, right? So P103, mass airflow, right? We can do that. that so if you have a generalized generic P code and you're just like, what, what does that mean? Now you have that. You could go out on the web if you wanted to and do some more research with that. But those, that's a pretty nice feature. Quick support allows you to log in. Uh, it's gonna, I don't have it, right? Um, you have the ability to allow somebody to log in on their end and say, hey, what's going on here? Let's, let's look at the files. Let's see what the crash was. Let's see what's going on. Um, and I'm not going to do that right now, but you could do this and they will literally log in there and give you a hand with what's going on. So very cool. Data manager. Here's our images, right? I did take a picture. Let's take a look at it. There it is. It was just that one picture, a picture of a picture of a picture, but there it is. And so that could be very handy and very quick when you're trying to show something to a customer. Hey, uh, you know, we noticed this is broken here, so we took a picture of it. Here's the freeze frame of whatever. Video files will be there. Data playback, so that would be live feeds. And then we do have apps and um, 
error reports there as well. So really cool. All right, hot functions are here, and we do have the following live hung. So we do steering angle reset, injector coating, tire pressure monitor reset, diesel particulate filter uh, afterburn, battery matching, electronic parking brake reset, oil light reset. We can program immobilizer keys. That's kind of a really high-end feature for this scan tool to be able to perform. Throttle relearns and ABS bleedings. Pretty much everything you're going to want to do, you can do. And that is why this is a really, really high-end functioning tool at a very, very affordable price. I was shocked at how inexpensive this was compared to uh, other tools in this class. Then, of course, we've got Diagnose. Going into Diagnose, we've got a bunch of different cars here. Um, we'll go into, well, let's just take a look at a Cadillac here to start with. We don't need to mess around. And so I don't have anything hooked up. I'm hoping that while we're in, um, uh, while we're in the mode for a demo that it's going to just pull up a rando car, but I doubt it. So it probably is attempting to find the VCT and it's not. So I don't know what will happen here, but we'll give it a shot. Oh, cool. So we'll manually select a vehicle. As you can see right now, before updates are installed, the coverage goes up to 2021. 20, uh, we'll pick a 2015 Cadillac Escalade ESV. And it's going to attempt to read, but like I said, I don't think. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to eight speed transmission. All right, so demo mode, it looks like it is going to go through all this stuff. You can see how quickly it rolls through. And with auto, like if I wanted to pick um, if I wanted to pick automatic, it's where it would go in and read it would read all the uh, VIN number stuff, so it would find a lot of this information that I'm picking here uh, automatically. It's asking me options because I've gone with it, and I'm just picking random stuff, as you can tell here. System selection. So, I mean, take a look at this, and this is, this is beautiful. Engine, transmission, multi-axis accelerometer. That's going to be for accident avoidance and such. Steering angle sensor. We, of course, have uh, airbags, body control, parking assist, electronic assist. I mean, look at all the equipment that you can get into with this. That's pretty darn cool. Is that not incredible in-depth? Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty blown away by this. We'll get into some of those deeper ones, but for this right here, I just want to look at, um, you know, some of the stuff it'll do. So trouble codes, um, let's see if it's going to pull. Yeah, it won't. It won't because we're not, we're not actually hooked to a car. I was hoping maybe it would have a, a fake one here. But so we have display. We can look at certain ones. We can do diagnostic tests right off of there. Freeze frame failure records, clear DTC. So, I mean, you're, you're looking at all the stuff that's just here in the DTC setup. But we also have data lists, right? I can go in here and take a look at live data. Do I want to check out engine data? Do I want to look at the heating and AC? I mean, look at all the different systems that are just in engine relations, right? H2, um, O2 sensors, fuel trim, ignition, EVAP. I mean, just incredible amount of stuff going on here. Let's check out this, inspection and maintenance data. Yeah, a lot of this we're not hooked up to, but... We'll get out of that. Event information. So if I had a code, that would have been a freeze frame. And then we got configuration slash refresh. So I can I can relearn crankshaft position, gear position, idle relearn. And so when you get into some of these newer cars, and even a 2015 sounds newer, but honestly, these Cadillacs, this particular model is based off a much older car. Some of the subsystems are pretty recent, but when it comes to the engine itself, it's it's an iron block V8. It's, it's pretty pretty old school to be honest with you but there are some that are going to give you an awful lot of options things that you can reset things that you can change parameters and then of course our reset oil light fuel trim o2 sensor fuel pressure rail so you know clutch slippage data from a transmission so if you're worried that your transmission's going out you can reset the counter for it and count from zero again so a lot of stuff man and there's a lot of stuff going on here and I'm not trying to like blow through this, but I could spend the rest of my life just talking about this portion of it. Let's get out of here. I wonder if, uh, I'm just wondering if there's our hot function again. And of course there is generic OBD2. So if you want to get in and I think it's going to ask, yeah, it's probably going to ask to go in. So I can't go any farther than that. But in part two, we'll go in through the generic side. You can see live data through that. 
It's always amazing to me that no matter how in-depth vehicles we get, there's still an awful lot of stuff that you know the generic side can teach us and show us that uh, you know the other side of things, the actual OEM side, sometimes can't. So that's a really cool feature right there. All right, let's get out of that. Let's take a look at updates because I'll bet you there's a bunch, and that is something that you're definitely going to want to do. Yeah, you've got a lot of updates. And special functions. Oh, yeah, you've got a lot of updates on special function. Look at this stuff. So these are all independent manufacturers like Volvo, Subaru, whatever. You're going to be going in there and also have their own special functions as opposed to just, you know, the ones that that you that you're aware of that are coming with it. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start downloading that. And you can see you just click on all or you can just update the ones you want to update. Now this is going to take a while, so I'm not going to sit here. I'm actually going to pull out of this, but I'll update this for now. And we'll pull out of that as well. Now, what else can this unit do? Well, there's quite a bit. If we want to go back into Diagnose, you'll notice that there's some other stuff. We can take our picture. We can take a video of what we're doing right here. We can go right into, hey, I've got a problem right here, and go straight from it. So if I'm in Bentley, which I have thankfully not worked on Bentleys, although they're pretty cool-looking cars, then I can go into Bentley and be like, hey, uh, when I was in subfolder 4 here, this happened. Can you help me out with that? There's a search button. I can search for whatever car I'm looking for if I want to for some reason. Here's where we keep... Let me lower that down. Here's where we have our, our ability to, you know, I can get rid of all these things that we opened up. But hey, check it out. We've got the Play Store, so you can add stuff to this. This is the ability, if you want... I'll have to try that again. I guess maybe the, because I'm downloading already, but... We have the ability to add apps. So if I wanted to add, you know, like Napa's uh, app or tire pressure app or Torx apps, there's a bunch of different apps you can add, plus the inspection part of vehicle inspection. Got a camera. I can download vehicle inspection software to this, and I can then go through. And if I want to add, um, you know, a report I can give the customer. Here's a picture of your brakes. Here's a picture of your wheels. Here's a picture of, you know, a body damage that we noted during the inspection. This is your all-in-one solution to that. I think a lot of times people don't realize just how, how awesome these tablet-based scan tools are. Uh, we're so used, I'm so used to using an OEM, so like Vita for Volvo, the DICE and, and the Vita program. And of course, they've moved on since then, but I kind of got out of the business full-time a while back. But TIS for Toyota, or, you know, there's a bunch of different brands. And they're great tools. But if you're going to work at an independent, scan tools are not all built alike. Although this is much more complex, it also is going to give you a much greater range of use. We're able to do things with a uh, Android-based tablet like this that you never could even dream of with a handheld scanner, a mid-range scanner. And, and you know, the prices of these things are going to change, so I'm not giving you an exact price, but I think if you Google, and I'm going to leave a link for you all to go to Ansel's site and check it out, you are going to be blown away by the fact that this tool, which does all this stuff, which is not proprietary software, this is Android-based, so you can add stuff to it if you'd like to, will allow you to do so much. That's going to do it for tonight. Part two, yeah, part two we're going to get in-depth. So all the stuff that I blew past because I could spend all year on it, well, I'll spend a good 20 minutes, if not more, digging into the subsystems on some actual cars, showing you some actual live data and some actual diagnostics. And I hope that you'll stick around for that. Don't forget, I've got that second channel, Farpoint Farms Restorations and Repairs, where we do nothing but this type of work. And thanks to Ansel for sending this my way. I'm very excited to be reviewing this, very excited to be playing with this. And I'm happy to say that uh, that's a good company. I've worked with these folks before uh, on my own dollar. And so uh, if I'm buying it with my own money and they're agreeing to send me something, I know it's going to be good. Till next time, my friends, take care.